now. Bayard races down a gravel road bordered by pink flowering trees. The road leads to a pearly gray palace where the white queen and her court walk a marble esplanade. The trees seem sad. Have you been speaking to them? Yes, your majesty. Perhaps a bit more kindly. The queen spots Bayard, then faces her pale white-haired followers. Would you want to excuse me for a moment? Thank you. As the courtiers disperse, she glides gracefully toward the dog. Once out of their sight, she abandons her regal air, runs to the bloodhound, and crouches before him. What news, Bayard? Alice has returned to Underland. Where is she now? In Salas and Grom. Forgive me. I allowed her to divert from her destined path. No, but that is exactly where she will find the Vorper Sword. We have our champion. Best now. has done him well. She affectionately scratches his head. Bayard flops down, resting his muzzle on her snowy skirt. Now, in the Red Queen's garden, Alice wanders past the hedge pruned in the monarch's likeness. The hedgehog scurries over and calls up to her. Alice leans attentively. Have you seen the hat around here? The little animal nods and points. Following its gaze, Alice finds the top hat sitting at the base of a hedge. She picks it up and brushes it off. At night, lightning flashes. The Red Queen paces a torchlit chamber by an open balcony. You must find Alice, Sting. Without the Jabberwocky, my sister's followers will surely rise against me. She steps out on the balcony. Her ugly little sister. Why did they adore her, but not me? I cannot fathom it. The rabbit peeks in. You are far superior in all ways. I know. But Moana can make anyone fall in love with her. Monkeys bear the scroll. Men. The rabbit hops over. Women. The queen glances at the animals supporting her tables and chairs. Even the furniture. The hiding rabbit watches her in stain. Even the king. The knave peers over the balcony's edge. Following his gaze, the queen eyes one of the heads floating in the moat. Had to do it. You would have left me. The rabbit glances at the tabletop. Majesty. He peeks out at the queen and knave. Is it not better to be feared than loved? The rabbit swipes the oraculum. Not certain anymore. The queen bats her eyes at stain. Oh, let her have the rabble. I don't need them. I have you. She hugs him girlishly, pressing her cheek to his stomach. The rabbit edges back, glances cautiously at the door, then scrambles out. Locked in the queen's embrace, Stain looks away with a sickened shudder. Now, the hatter works in a chamber with stained glass windows. Alice enters, towering over her friend, and beams at his work. They're wonderful. All sorts of hats stand on display. You must let me try one on. It is good to be working at my trade again. He turns his sewing machine's crank. It's just a pity you have to make them for her. The hatter's smile fades. His arm slows to a stop and he shifts his anguished gaze. What is the hatter with me? Hatter. Frowning to himself, he stands. Stepping away, he knocks a hat aside, then attacks several others. Held to the table by an ankle shackle, he violently swings his arms. Hatter! Alice cups his face in her giant hands. Have you any idea why a raven is like a writing desk? I'm frightened, Alice. I don't like it in here. It's terribly crowded. Under Alice's compassionate gaze, he works his pink lips. Have I gone mad? Alice presses a hand to his chalky brow, then lowers it to his cheek again. Afraid so. You're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. She beams softly at him. The hatter stares, then smiles, his green eyes glistening. Here. She sets the top hat on his head, tugging it snug over his bushy hair. That's better. You look yourself again. He gazes up at her with a calm, happy grin. That man, where are my hat? I'm not a patient follow. I told you to keep the vocal sword hidden in the castle. The rabbit will help you. Find it, Alice. Take it to the White Queen. We'll go to the White Queen together. Why is it you're always too small or too tall? Alice grins at her friend. 